Rookie wide receiver Jahan Dotson has been a standout all off season, and we're here to tell you why. We will be discussing what makes the wideout special and how he compares to other receivers around the league. And we check in with Dotson Wide's receiver coach at Penn State to get the inside scoop on what to expect in year one with the Commanders. Plus, Logan Paulson goes inside the film room with head coach Ron Rivera to break down some of Dotson's top moments from his time at Penn State. And the first round pick has a special message for Commanders fans. We have tons of Jahantant in store today. It all starts now. And welcome into Command Center, Julie Donaldson, Logan Paulson, Santana Moss, and we're talking all about our first round draft pick, Jahan Dotson. A lot of excitement for him. And just a little bit so far, we have seen at OTAs. It's kind of a little bit of a teaser of what may come. What has stood out to you, though, most about Dotson? I mean, just how polished he's been. I mean, he has been outstanding. He's been a pro's pro so far, and that's great to see from a young guy. Yeah, definitely what he said, he's been a pro's pro. You know, you don't get too many rookies to come in here and seem to be ready day one. Yeah. He seems that way. Well, he did have a lot of time at Penn State. We will get to that career and also talk to his coach as well. But let's talk to his coach now. Here is the wide receivers coach, Drew Terrell, on what he's seen from Dotson. Well, he's been, uh, you know, everything we thought he would be thus far. You know, he's a, he's a smooth cat, you know, solid route runner. Uh, really good ball skills. Um, you know, he's a smart kid. Uh, he's picking things up well for a young guy. Um, so he, he's been as advertised and, you know, what we thought he would be at this point. He's a very natural receiver. A lot of things come to him naturally. Um, he has the ability to create on his own, um, you know, win his one-on-one -on -one matchups. You know, his play speed and, you know, as I, as I referenced, the ball skills. You know, when, when the ball's in his area, you know, for not being, you know, that big of a guy, um, you know, you can throw the ball anywhere around him and he's going to come down with it. So, you know, those are some things that drew us to him throughout the process and, you know, glad we got him. He has a, just a really good personality. He seeks coaching, you know, a, a guy that you enjoy being around. Um, so, you know, when he, you have guys like that in the room, which, you know, all the guys that we, we've able to been to build in that room pretty much have that, have that humble, down-to-earth, uh, personable attitude. And he, he's another guy that fits right in. So that is what the coach has to say about what makes Dotson special and why he's going to fit in on offense. But let's now talk about what makes the ultimate wide receiver. Since we have Santana and Logan here, here is Tana's checklist uh, on Dotson and how many of the boxes he checks off. Tana, where do we start? Appreciate you, Julie. Now, Logan, this league's been around for a long time, and yep. you very seldom see a receiver that checks off all the boxes. All the boxes. But I think right now we have, what, six boxes, and we're yep. already saying, now, I know it's, it's, it's very premature, <laughs> but this guy has showed us some things that we want to speak on right now. And out the gate, I want to talk about his football IQ. Yeah. One of the things about football IQ, you can't play this game without having the smarts. Yeah. IQ stands out. Cooper Cup, like, you yeah. know, he has the IQ. Yeah. Something that, you know, uh, Ron Rivera spoke on already. We see it already yeah. from how he's taking on many camps and uh, OTAs. Another thing that stands out to me, hands. Yep. Uh, I look at hands like a, a D Hawks. You know, he yep. has, he goes up, he has the radius, the arm radius. He's going and snagging these balls. What you think about these first two that I checked off? Yeah, so I think this, the hands is interesting because that's something you saw in college. He was outstanding. Yeah. He's got those big old white gloves that they kind of envelop the football. And Carson Wentz does not throw a softball. No doubt. And he catches that ball with ease. And I think this one, one, this football IQ one is directly related to this one, this route running one right here, because mm -hmm. he runs routes at like the next level, yeah. seeing different levels. So I'm glad that both those are on here. And we're talking about next level route running. Yeah. Who stands out to you? Devontae Adams. Yeah, yeah. Next level route yeah. running. That's something that this guy, he's a rookie. Yeah, yeah. He hasn't played in the game yet, yep, but he's absolutely. a rookie and he's showing us that right now on the practice field. Speed wise, he's not the fastest guy. No, he's not. But Odell Beckham, he's not the fastest, but he gets up and down the field yeah. like an Odell Beckham. What you think? And I think the thing about the speed that's interesting too is he's kind of, he doesn't look even look like he's trying. Yeah. He's just kind of gliding in his routes, but I do think it helps with his route running. And I think it helps with his football IQ because it helps him digest defenses, digest coverages, and it looks easy so he can get that false acceleration and really kind of put those defenses into defensive backs in a bind. These last two boxes, one of the guys he looked up to, body control, Deshaun Jackson. Deshaun oh, Jackson is yeah. one of those guys that he, he could probably check off all these boxes as well, yeah. but he had tremendous body control. He's yeah. one of those guys that can locate a ball and make sure he come down with it. And last but not least, Stephon Diggs coming off the line of scrimmage. Yeah. Being explosive, but subtle at the same time, but making sure he beat his guy at the line before he gets down. So how, do you think this relates to press coverage here? I definitely believe this, this relates to press coverage. That's one yeah. of the things that to me, well, when I came in here, yeah. we made sure that if you couldn't get off the line of scrimmage, you can't play in this league. Yeah, and one of the things you saw on here is physical presence, right? Yeah. And you're not a big man. Can he be successful being a smaller dude? Yeah, and I think more so in this league, you don't have a lot of guys 
putting that press on guys. These yeah. guys are more off because yeah. the league want the offense to be offense, high power scoring, yeah. all that stuff. And these are the boxes, and Jahan checks Check, them all. Checks off. them all, right? Thank you, guys. Now, we have seen Dotson make some impressive plays, but let's take a look at his college numbers. The former Nittany Lion appeared in 42 games through four seasons, setting the Penn State record for single-season punt return average. Dotson put up big numbers his senior season, totaling nearing nearly 1,200 yards and 12 touchdowns, becoming the sixth Nittany Lion to record a 1,000-yard season. But what does he credit much of his success to? Well, here is Dotson after OTAs. I would say... I was at my wide receivers coach at, at Penn State, Coach Stubblefield. Uh, he, he was a big influence on me. Uh, had him for two years, and pretty much taught me a lot of life lessons. Um, I look at, I look, I look up to him as someone who, who I know I can always go to and always lean on and uh, just talk about anything. And Coach Taylor Stubblefield joins us now, had Jahan for a couple years at Penn State. Look, he gives high praise to you as one of his mentors helping him here. But when he was drafted, you actually went to congratulate him and also made a point that he came back for his senior year for his brothers. What does that say for how it helped him maybe get even further ready for the NFL and also to the character of who he is as a player? Yeah, I think that, um, you know, Coach Franklin, um, we do a really good job here at the Penn State of giving our guys the best information that they have. We, we outsource it third party. We get information from uh, uh, the, the teams around the NFL to see what his uh, draft, draft status would be. And yeah, after his junior year, um, we had a meeting with him. It would be best for him to come back to help his draft status, and, and, and he did that. He did it not only for himself, but also for, for the team because Coach Franklin always says that if, if somebody can get drafted as high as possible, that's better for them, and it's better for Penn State. And so uh, he trusted the process. He came back, had a heck of a year, and put himself to be uh, with, with you guys, the Washington Commanders. One of the things that this team did very consciously is they went out, they wanted to get players that would be ready to go, that you don't have to really kind of wait and develop. Where would you say or expect him to come in here and have an impact right off the bat? Well, that, that, that's going to be tough. You know, um, Jahan is extremely competitive. And that wide receiver room there at Washington is uh, is legit. And, and you, you know, Coach Diaz has talked about uh, our defense coordinator here. Um, he talked about the best players can't have bad days. And Jahan is going to make sure that he does not have bad days. And he's going to go in there and he's going to try to be as consistent as possible. And it sounds like he is doing a pretty good job of that. Um, and he knows that offense is about being where you're supposed to be when you're supposed to be there. And then once you get that ball in your hand, then you know your your creativity, your your explosiveness. That's where that comes into play. Um, your playmaking ability, and and he obviously has that. So uh, he's going to be ready. I know he's going to be ready mentally. Uh, NFL, it is fast. It is fast, fast, fast. So um, they're, they're going to get him ready for uh, for the season opener. What would you say is the least talked about element of his game that folks might be surprised by? how competitive he is because uh, he's a quiet he's a, he doesn't have this flamboyant demeanor or or a persona about him he's gonna come in he got the little ball he might have some little fancy backpack but he's probably gonna wear some you know old dusty Birkenstocks and he's gonna uh, come in there and, and he's gonna work um, so I, I think that is gonna be surprising and then um, his ability to work like his his catapult numbers um last year were were off the charts his his player load the amount of 90 percent reps uh that, that he was doing in practice the amount of uh over 90 percent yards that he was running was out of this world and he never came up to me and was like hey coach i i need one today or can I relax today? I didn't have to motivate him to work hard. 
he chose to work hard. And I think that that can become infectious, especially as he grows in his career in the NFL. We're already seeing that. The coaches are commenting on it, and the fans are going to love to see the rewards from that on the field once we do get to it. A little bit of the break before we kind of get to seeing with pads on, but a lot of excitement already. Uh, We appreciate your time and for the work you put in to help him advance to be able to join us here at the Commanders. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, Julie. To see more of Jahan, be sure to check out Commander's Training Camp July 27th through August 18th. Camp will be held at the park out in Ashburn, Virginia. The fans can enter a lottery for a chance to win tickets to come out and watch practice. The team will also hold an open practice at FedEx Field for any fans who want to check that out. For free tickets and more training camp info, head over to commanders.com. When we come back, we are heading inside the film room with Logan and head coach Ron Rivera on what makes Dotson the right guy for this offense. And Jahan has a special message for Commander's fan base. He will share a letter he wrote in this episode of Command Center. Getting to know Dotson a little bit off the field as well. But of course, what we really want to see is how he performs once training camp and the regular season is here. We've always already heard head coach Ron Rivera talking about what he brings to the receiver room. And while we can't break down film from him from OTAs, we can break down film from him from Penn State. And we're doing just that. Here is Logan with head coach Ron Rivera. Coach, always glad to have you here. We're going to talk about your guy, uh, Dotson. You took him in the first round receiver. There's a lot of stuff to like on the tape. One of the things you said in your interview was that he reminds you of Steve Smith and Deshaun Jackson. Those are lofty comparisons, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. But I kind of get it a little bit here, right? Because, again, Steve Smith competes for 50-50 balls. This guy competes for 50-50 balls in a dramatic way. Like, he's not a big man, but he competes for the football in the air. You know, one of the things that you do when you watch him is he seems to time it out when he can get the best advantage in terms of the high ball. Right. If you watch him, he gets himself above the man. Right. That way, if the guy does jump, the guy's going to jump into Steve and even elevate him more. Well, that's what you're seeing right here with yeah. Jahan. You see yeah. Jahan go to jump. Yeah. The DB goes to jump, and what's he do? He bumps in. Bumps him up. Exactly. And- so, and then we got this next clip here. Again, they get, they're kind of running this weird corner. He's running a post here, a quarters coverage, weird college coverage here. But again, the thing I like about this, I get a Deshaun vibe here. I don't know if it's the towel. I don't right. know if it's the visor, whatever it is. But he seems to just be able to accelerate to the football in the air in a nice way. Well, you know, this also you got to give credit to his release. If you watch his release, he kind of pushes himself out a little bit, which kind of gets the, the corner, which will now watch as, as the corner starts to widen. See how the corner's in yes. position so yeah. he knows. Now he's got the angle. Once he makes the cut, he has that speed to separate. To separate. A la Deshaun, uh, yeah, Deshaun Jackson, right? Deshaun yeah. Jackson. Who was one of the fastest guys ever in the NFL. Yes. So, again, and then one of, my, one of my favorite things about him, I kind of felt like he was the most NFL-ready receiver. That's something you said. Yeah. And to me, NFL-ready, you got to run great routes. So let's talk about this route he's about to run on cross. Yes. He was a draftable safety yes. from Maryland. Well, what you like about it is he sells that he's coming across the formation. And he also understands that if he can get this safety right now, look at the position he started with. He started with his hips open to the sideline saying, I'm not going to let you outside. <laughs> yeah. So he knows that by taking the extra step, he'll cross. And as soon as he sees him crossing, that's when he sticks and goes vertical. Yeah. And he set him up very, very nicely. Why? Because he doesn't get anxious. He stayed very patient, sold it to the inside, and he knows as soon as those hips flipped opposite of where he really wanted to go. He knew he could cross him and get him have to either speed turn or try to pivot back. He tried to speed turn too late. Too late. And I think that's one thing. If you're a young route runner out there, patience as a route runner. We're going to see that here on the next one, which is great. Again, big play touchdown. This guy ran a 4-3. He's walking right by that guy. Again, he's here on a post. You guys run a concept similar to this. And I love how patient he is. This guy's got outside leverage. And I'll let you talk about it, but he kind of stems to the outside shoulder of this DB and gets them all turned around here. Well, what you want to do is, is, is once you sell it, okay, what he did on this is he started up inside, like he was trying to get the inside release to the post originally. Mm. As soon as he saw this guy start to stack him, he knew he had to cross him up. See, the, go back. Yep. If you go back and you see when they're even, 
okay? When he is stacked in an even position, if you go back just a touch, right yeah. there. Now he knows this guy's going to cut him off, so he's got him stacked. Yep. So if he goes to run the post, where's this guy going to be? He's going to be yeah. in his hip pocket. But if he can sell it like he's going to the seven, yep. this guy's got to turn and react, and he does. And guess what happens? He gets inside where he was going all along. That's fantastic. And, Coach, like it just seems like he's a competitive guy, yes. awesome hands, understands route running new. It seems like he got a heck of a football player. Oh, I, I really do believe we do. And what I really like about also not just being a really good football player, but he's a solid young man. And that's almost just as important, right? Because yes. you know that they're going to keep growing and be good pros. Yes. A good awesome. pro is exactly what we're, we're hoping to get. Excited we've got him. And stay with us because when we come back, we will hear from Dotson himself on his message to you, the Washington fans. Hey all, it's Jahan Dotson, and you're watching Command Center. With the 16th pick in the 2022 NFL Draft, the Washington Commanders select Jahan Dotson, wide receiver, Penn State. Best hands in the draft. And fires and so touchdown, Jahan Dotson. Touchdown, over the head. No, not over the head. Who else? Jahan Dotson. <laughs> Okay, so we're celebrating the 4th of July now. Everybody likes to have the fireworks all go off. But if we're talking about fireworks on the field, what is it, Santana, that makes Dotson that kind of explosive player? I think one of the things that stands out, uh, especially from the wide receiver position, if you can have um, a guy running at top speed and still get in and out of his breaks at that speed, that alone is something different. You know, you, that, you, you have to be a rare breed to be able to do that. I was one of those, those guys that they gave that, you know, say, hey, that's one of the things that Tanner has going for himself. I see that with DeHaan. He's very deceptive in his speed, but when it's time to put that foot in the ground, he's in and out of those cuts and he's gone before mm. you even get a chance to play. Always open, as you were even saying when you watch him at Penn State, so far showing that as well here. Uh, yeah, I think so. I think he does a really nice job of stacking routes, like using the, the big out to set up the post the next time. And he just is thinking about football at a very high level, how to beat DBs, how to manipulate defenses. And to me, that leads to some of his explosive stuff. And again, like his ability to accelerate when the football's in the mm -hmm. air, you know, very Deshaun Jackson-esque. So a fantastic skill set for a young man. A lot of growing still to do, but really excited mm -hmm. about him. Well, we heard head coach Ron Rivera even saying how, you know, I mean, look, they're not going too hard against each other, but right. how he was right. able to get the better of a couple of our DBs out there as well. Right. Just just early on, explosive plays hopefully will follow him throughout his NFL career, especially his rookie season as well. And since he is a rookie, well, we have to introduce him to the fans. And as we say goodbye on this command center, we leave you with a letter that Jahan Dotson wrote for you, the Commander fans. Dear Commander's family, I remember everything about that night, the night I became a part of this team. Originally, the plan for my draft party was just immediate family with my mom, my dad, my brother, grandparents, and close cousins. But my dad is very open, so it ended up being way bigger than I had ever imagined. I feel like it was way better that way, because that's kind of how I grew up, with just a big support system. When I moved to Nazareth, they really brought me in and supported me throughout my whole journey, all the way to Penn State. It didn't feel like draft night. It honestly felt like a regular Thursday night. I was pretty much just chilling in my room about an hour before the draft, just playing video games with my friends. But when the draft started and receivers started to be taken, it became more real. I remember sitting in my basement with my best friend watching the Suns and Pelicans game when he said to me, bro, I got a feeling you might get called a little earlier. I didn't think anything of it, but then I went outside and saw Garrett Wilson, Chris Olave, Jameson Williams all get picked back to back to back. And then I thought to myself, I'm the next receiver that's really supposed to get taken. I got the call four picks later from Coach Rivera I felt like all the hard work that honestly flashed right before my eyes. It all happened so fast, I was just really excited for the moment. I would honestly say it's everything that I've ever imagined. Ever since I was a little kid, my dream was to always play in the NFL. I wanted no other job. When I was a little kid, my parents would buy me toy trucks and action figures, but I didn't even want to touch any of it. I didn't even open the boxes. Back then, a lot of people didn't believe in me. They would always say, you're too small. You would never do this thing. That's why it was good that everyone was there when I got drafted. Those people that were there, they believed in me and were always in my corner. I feel like I do a good job of not looking in the past at things you could have done because there's a rhyme or reason to why you didn't do it. You can't change the past. You can only change what's in front of you. My motto has always been to focus on the next play. If you mess up on one play, you can make it up on the next one. 
I've strived to be better every single day, not only on the football field, but also in life in general. I'm always looking forward to the future, not dwelling on the past or making the same mistake twice. It took a while for it to hit me that I had just fulfilled my lifelong dream. From the time that I flew out on the private jet to the team facility, I was trying to be thankful for every moment. It finally happened when they gave me the playbook and I had to start learning all this new terminology. I say it every day, but it almost feels like I'm a freshman in college again. Getting familiar with the new system and then trying to play fast and be comfortable. It's tough, but this is what I was made for. I'm just having fun doing it. I'm always looking forward to the next thing. That's always been part of my character. I'm not too big on self-accomplishments. I'm always trying to be better. If I score a touchdown on one play, I'm trying to score three tomorrow. It's just how I'm wired. I'm super competitive and it's weird because my dad is really outgoing and he gets me excited about stuff, but I'm always looking ahead. I'm doing everything I said I would do at a young age, but I try not to listen to the outside noise too much and I never want to become complacent. It's one of my biggest fears. I feel like that makes me work even harder because I want to be better every single day. I have bigger accomplishments and goals in mind, but you can't really focus on things that are going to be at the end of the season. You have to take care of what's coming tomorrow. It sounds cliche, but I want to be the best teammate possible. Any way I can help this team win, I'm willing to do it. I want to be there for my guys. And in my case, that's me being a sponge and learning what I can so I can help someone out. If someone's at the X position, I can be like, yo, I got you for a couple plays. I want you to know that I want to be the best player on the field each and every day. I'm going to put my all on the line for the commanders each and every day. I love the game of football so much. It's literally my sanctuary. So I feel like every time I'm out there, I'm leaving it all on the line because of my passion for the game and how much I love it. I can't wait for the season to start so I can show you exactly what this game means to me. See you soon, Jahan.